Hello, I'm Sora Luxon, and this is Planetary Magic, the Sun. Now, first off, the Sun is not a planet, but a star. But within magic, we allow its powerful influence the same planetary label. That doesn't mean ceremonial magicians and practicing high hermeticists don't know what every astrophysicist knows. We do. We know and agree that the sun is a star within science, <laughs> the same way everyone else does. But it's part of planetary magic. The symbol of the sun is very powerful in its interpretive and emotive correspondences within our minds. The circle with a dot in the center. Now, anyone who's cast a circle in magic already has a subconscious, highly aware knowledge of the resemblance and that circuit's authority. When we cast a circle or even draw one upon a blank sheet of paper, we create a boundary, a fixed space within that also in being generated denotes everything without. That is everything not confined within the parameters of that form, that space, a perfect boundary visually on paper. And when we cast it magically, alone in ritual, for instance, the creation and then wholly established recognition of boundary encapsulating us from everything beyond the area we have claimed command over for use is being generated. The similarity of just that one symbolic interpretation of the symbol of the sun, the sign of the sun, that circle with a dot in the center, and the majesty of the circle in casting a magical circle are more than enough to get anyone started on looking to and seeking out the many deeper and hidden meanings and layers the sun's symbol holds. If you, for a moment, think about how you center yourself within a magical circle, which is actually a Saturn circle expressive of boundary and limit, which is what Saturn is all about. And I'll talk about Saturn in a different video. When you are in that circle and then think back to the symbol of the sun, with its corresponding dot in the center, that focal point. Yeah, you see? That's you. It's powerful stuff. When you're within a magical circle of Saturn, you are becoming the sun, the sun sign. You, within the circle, are the creation of that actual symbol, and not just literally. When you are working within magic, when you are working within a magic circle, you are participating in a fundamental practice of occultism that is becoming the center of the universe. Granted, scientifically, the sun as a star isn't the center of the universe, but it is the center of our solar system, and it took us a while to even gain enough perspective in recognizing our authority to then also be able to find the humility to accept that information, right? That it was the center of our solar system, which we now know as simple common sense and common natural law began with a very real understanding and meditation upon the symbols of occultism. So one of the most powerful correspondences this symbol has to the magical practitioner is not only of the Saturnalian circuit, circuit describing boundaries and limits, limits in and on manifested form with the sun in the center ever encapsulated by and pushing outward on and against those boundaries, but also of what you are in that dynamic, when you are that dot, that center, there's a dot, a focus point. And that does speak directly to focus and goals, which is one of the sun's many attributes. It is the original target symbol, a bullseye. Also, because of the nature of these two forces, the circle and the dot, and their interplay, you also have the eternal and sublime pantomime of the polarity between limitation and limitlessness, boundary, externalized divisionary force, and integral integrated expressive force. The polarity between the dynamic and the static, life and death. The aggregate comprehensive dot 
of centered centripetal creation and creative generating energies and the centrifugal circlet of restrictions, restraint, constraint that's spun off around it. The immaculate representation of the balance maintained in our current plane of being. In understanding that, we also come to comprehend that the sun in hermetic occultism and Enochian ceremonial magics, in particular, carries the character, the personality trait of I am, right? It's the I can, am, anything, can, do, anything planet. And it's then always laboring within the construct of Saturn's limit line, right? Who, re- who responds, right? If Saturn were to respond to the sun saying, I am, I can, Saturn's going to say, no, you can't. Try it. Prove it. It's going to set that limitation that the sun then needs to push against. So the occultist does. Although if Saturn is really working hard against their sun sign (laughs) on an individual sun sign, they're probably going to have to work 10 times harder at it than someone who isn't trying to do that thing at that time, isn't under that auspicion, right? Which isn't the best thing to be accomplished right then. In other words, they're probably going to have 10 times harder than someone who isn't willfully laboring against Saturn, having sway over their sun sign. But things can be accomplished either way. The person having to push extra hard against Saturn will just have to work harder than anyone else to get there. The planetary trait of the sun is the positive to Saturn's negative, the affirmation to the negation. That doesn't make one good and the other bad, remember. Just two different sides of the same balance sheet, two different poles, pushing and pulling against each other to verify a harmony. You can learn a huge amount about the hidden attributes of the sun and planetary magic by looking to its astrological depiction within the tarot. You have the savior. The sun is often referred to as the savior. Christos, the son of God, the Christ, the burning heart the id of the self rather than the ego, right? Well, when it's in harmony, blazing with transcendent light, literally as far back as alphabetical language symbolism goes, here you have the very essence of self, the soul, S-O-L, the sun in Latin, that is the soul, See how everything ties in as time moves language forward? The sun is S-O-L, soul in Latin. Just as the id corresponds to identity, identity. (laughs) So here, the savior born, the pure and divine child, bursting forth with vitality and light, shown in the sun card of the tarot, the conception of all life and life's potent energies, grow tall in this child, in this innocence wake, right? As this very new being rides forward on the steed of triumph, success banner held high. The tarot never lies, but reveals its wisdom to the mind which seeks. So yes, the sun is the I am planet, the I can planet. This child of the sun's tarot is wide-eyed and exuberant, fully awake. The depiction of conscious awareness, which is what the sun and planetary magic is. When Saturn says no, the sun says yes. The sun in logos, in marketing, right, advertising, is relating to the hero, the savior, success, the yes, I can, I can do it, the power emblematic of triumph within the occult with centered powers. That's how the human mind works. Occult symbols have great power on the human psyche. Occult doesn't mean in and of itself anything other than veiled, right? It means hidden, secreted, not perceivable by everyone. And that doesn't mean evil or bad. 
A cult just means here's a thing most people never see or find. And so occult symbols, like the symbol of the sun and its ideogram, its idea form, that is, it's a visual representation and characterization, have power on those that view them. And of course, are powerful to those who can use them, who actually employ them willfully. The subconscious recognizes the occulted personality traits of the planet of the sun when the conscious mind sees it represented, depicted. Whether or not someone's an occultist or a Nokian magician who can actively interpret that interplay or understand it, it's still happening. So in magic, whenever you want to call upon the powers of willpower, conscious awareness, identity or the self, forms of self-expression, that which radiates, pushes, and projects against limitation. Mm. Success, focus, to hit that target, goal achievement, overcome some big no with a powerful push of yes. That's the planet of the sun that you'll be left hand cornering your written sigil works authority to when you write the symbol or the sun sign you'll be etching onto that candle or spell jar or drawing down an invocation during ceremony to have those effects. Most people understand their astrological sign when they say their horoscope, right? Like, oh, I'm a Taurus. What they're talking about is their sun sign. That's their sun sign. If you've listened to my other lessons, you've come across an explanation in brief already of this, that we're all actually all of the signs. But to the non-practitioner, their sun sign is what they think of as their sign, as their horoscope. And there's a reason for it having that weight, even in the public eye. Your birthday each year is on the day on which the sun finds its return to its position of origin in the cycle of your life. That is the day it's back in the same position as it was on the day you were born. That's just reality. That's common sense, right? That's physics. And also, therefore, it's back in the same position as its origin on your natal or astrological charts. That's why it's your birthday. Being self-aware is literally being sun-aware, as soul was in the origin of the word self, S-O-L, and then into S-O-U-L. The sun doesn't judge or limit. That's Saturn's job. So self-expression, same thing, sun expression. You get the idea. So your sun sign, much like moon luna signs, it does dominate a priority of specific situations and outcomes. On the Kabbalistic tree of life, the sun is also a focus related directly to Tipereth, the center, the warm, glowing, amber gold of that centered torso, the solar plexus. Yes, there it is again, solar, the heart center. Later, I hope to do an astrological sign playlist to go hand in hand with the planetary YouTube video list I'm starting. But until I do, it's good to know that the sun sign is Leo. That's the sun sign. The sign of fixed fire. So most of what people think of when they think of, say, a Leo's personality traits have direct correspondence to the sun's planetary magical traits. The savior, the lion to the lamb, the constant strength, integral power. Look at me. Look at what I can do. I am. I overcome. I achieve against all obstacles. I don't pay attention to limits and boundaries. I push against them. I express myself despite limitation or obstacle. Opposing force allows me the potential for success. That's the sun. And get too close, I'm pure blazing potential. My inflamed passion can burn, tear through, burn away. My roar is nice from the right distance, too close, and it'll deafen you. The sun is the savior, the hero, and the hero always saves the day because it is the day. (laughs) This summertime always results in a proportionate amount of hero worship. 
seasonally because the sun is at its strongest and brightest to us then during the summer. You see it reflected in the chart toppers of song releases during the summertime. Not usually going to be the moody, depressing stuff climbing the ladder of popularity during the summer, right? No, it's all fireworks, self-recognition, active power. Anything that talks about light or, you know, the light within. Bright music does best in the summer. Just the common sense of occultism. In Hollywood, too, you see that same reflection, right, of the sun's rulership during the summertime. Action movies come out and do best during the summer. Fast-paced, heart-centered, hero-centered. The hero comes and saves the day. Integral, blazing love and active force and self-recognition overcoming all odds. The transcendence over powerful boundaries. Superhero movies adore the summertime and their ticket sales. (laughs) It's best to have that opening on a Sunday, right? (laughs) You want to make money on a film. Make a sun and planetary exaltation movie released during the summer on a Sunday. Anything with that occult message of attributes is going to thrive. (laughs) Sun magic is obviously at its most powerful in the summer. So if you're looking to do important sun magic, probably best to wait for a Sunday in the summertime. You have something that is central to your heart, something that's worth life or death to you. Again, best bring in some sun magic to that spell, ritual, or craft working. Now, because anyone who's come far enough in my videos to be listening to to this video is prepared and already attuned to what I'm about to say, I'll go ahead and say it. In magic, we don't just focus on what pleases or gratifies us. We don't just focus on the light. We have an understanding and comprehension that the dark is also necessary in order to achieve balance and harmony. That understanding and comprehending it is part of who and what the balance of the all is. Right? Because self-pleasure or self-pleasing or just going to what we like or what feels good, right? That's not what magic's about or how it invests us with our powers. Like all things, the planets and their attributes then have a polarity. They have two sides, two opposing forces, two faces, right? And both require our attention for mastery to be realized. The sun in all its glory, which shines on everything, can also be used to bad effect or harmful effect. It's it's also what drove Icarus to drown in the sea, right? When his wings melted off that his father Daedalus gave him. When our vanity, ego, ambition pushes too far, we or those around us will get burned. The sun, in its fierce and blazing exultation, has no problem melting or burning into ash anything that comes too close. The sun is all about purpose, and in magic, purpose is fundamental to the craft. But when over-realized or allowed to become obsessive, a sense of purpose and focus is then self-centeredness and egocentric. That is what it becomes. That is what it is. And this is the less friendly face of the sun's attributes. But they're there, and they need to be recognized. Now, this does mean that when other planetary attributes come close to the sun, people included, right, people with those attributes, they can become lit by it, inflamed, impassioned, set alight, but a little too close, too much, or too long, and they're destroyed by it burnt to cinders, made too hot, too bright, blinded by the light, destroyed by the brilliance, right? It's the difference between genius and insanity also. Now, when we talk about someone being brilliant, again, we're talking, speaking to the id, the genius, the genesis. Now, the sun also carries the planetary attribute of forgiveness, which seems strange given all of this active force that I've been talking about. But to the occulted, this is actually pretty easy to grasp, this concept of forgiveness 
being a character of the sun in planetary magic, as the sun is also what we look to when we think or speak of the warmth of forgiveness, right? Or the generosity of the heart, right? The heat of the heart. The sun is a very much about self-worth, that dot in the center of the circle, remember? And every trained occultist knows this principle of magic. When we genuinely have authentic self-worth recognized within, we don't get angry. We don't behave reactively. When we acknowledge and accept our power, we function from a place of great power that doesn't feel threatened because nothing can threaten it. And so when someone else behaves irrationally or badly or is, say, unkind toward us, whatever the problem may be, we see that isn't our problem, right? It isn't even a problem, but rather it's a current disharmony that is playing out its journey and story within that individual who is behaving that way. And it's probably playing out that way because it's a story that was told to them at some point. And they are now unconsciously just recreating it, right? Someone was mean to them and now they're a mean person, right? Usually we see fully and quite quickly that anyone behaving in that kind of a way, in a mean or reactive way, is functioning from a place of great insecurity within themselves, Now, that doesn't make it, obviously, their highest aspect of selfdom when they're behaving badly, right? And it doesn't make it okay for them to continue in that endlessly or make us want to be around them, right? Of course not, right? It doesn't make any sense. There's no common sense to hanging out with a person like that, someone who's maybe cursing at you or treating you poorly. But that is their path. And their behavior. And you have your own choices to make in your own behaviors, right? Your own path to take and you can choose to walk away. And the planetary correspondence of the sun, the blazing heart, the id, recognizes our internal selves as worthy and powerful. And therefore easily and able to, bunny ears here, quote unquote, forgive for lack of a better word, because it isn't about forgetting or being all right with harmful or toxic behaviors, which is sometimes what people think forgiveness means. It doesn't, right? It's more about acknowledging that their disharmony is not ours and therefore can't influence us and is not going to change who we are and how we wish to behave. So the sun or realized sun magic within us in its self-recognition and harmony, forgives those who behave in oppositional ways towards us because they have no power over us. Pointing the finger, finding the culprit, blame, judgment, getting angry with someone, reacting and enforcing rules on things, that's all Saturn attributes. That's all the characteristics of Saturn, not the sun. Worrying about what others are doing or doing to you Instead of focusing on yourself, right? Looking to focus. Finding the cause, right? Finding who's responsible for whatever the heck is going on. That's Saturn again, the judger, the judge. Saturn imposes responsibility. The sun accepts it. Knows that it's in self-control or in control of itself. The sun accepts the responsibility of the center of who and what it is. So it doesn't take on oppositional charges that someone who's being mean or negative might be trying to push upon it. The sun doesn't give up control of itself to another, and that includes letting someone make you angry by being angry, right? That's you giving up control over yourself if you're responding and reacting in that way. The sun doesn't let anyone take control over it, over its goals and its focus and its mastery of selfdom. The sun will take ultimate responsibility with a smile and with love. Die for its children, for instance, which is why it carries an offspring planetary attribute magic. It will die for its belief. It is 
the believer, right? It is the I am. Even if that needs to happen, say, painfully on a cross so that it can blaze forth again. The sun does so with nothing but love in its heart. The sun, the Christos, the blazing lion, however you're approaching this planetary magic, it's supposed to push back against the limit and boundary. That's what we're working with when we call on high sun magic, the potential to create, recognize, and project forth our heart-centered abilities and energies, the self that can't ever be doused, the flame always lit within, to pursue that goal, express that talent, succeed in the face of seemingly insurmountable roadblocks, be the hero, creativity, the action of fun, the might of the savior, the integral and so integrity of the self in full mastery. This is planetary sun magic. So you can start there. Until next time.